This video is about things to watch out for when gluing up and varnishing a tabletop like this one. Mostly stuff I left out of the other video. I got all the underlying wood ready, but this one has got quite a twist to it. So I'll rip that down the middle and that'll make that twist less pronounced. And that piece of wood also had quite a lot of tension in it, which really pinched down on the blade. At full width, I would have had to plane this much off of top and bottom to get that end flat. But as two narrow pieces, I only need to plane off half as much to get it flat. I was about to run this twisted wood over the jointer to plane out the twist, but then I realized if it's twisted now, it can twist more or untwist later. And that could give this whole tabletop a very slight twist. So I got another piece of wood that I'll use instead. The boards for this tabletop are actually just spruce with uh, lots of small pieces of oak glued on top. That turned out really nice, but I don't particularly recommend it because it was tons of work. This is getting into woodworking geekery, but uh, this board has cupped on me a little bit. You can see there's a gap of about a millimeter in the middle of this, so the whole board has gone this way a little bit. And it's gone even further than that actually, but uh, I clamped these calls onto the ends so at least the end would be straight while I glued these bits on there. And I think the reason it cupped is when I glued all these oak strips on here, that added a lot of moisture this side which caused that side to expand and that caused it to cup this way or the other way if it's upside down. The other thing that will be interesting going forward is I've got two different types of wood here. And oak expands probably by about one and a half times as much more seasonally than spruce does. Which means as the seasons change, this tabletop may want to cup as a whole. And whether or not that's a problem, whether or not I can hold it flat with a big brace across the bottom, that is to be determined. And in terms of avoiding tabletops cupping, it's important to put varnish on the top and bottom. Otherwise, if the humidity increases, there will be more humidity on the bottom than the top, so the bottom expands and the whole tabletop will cup like that a little bit and then it'll reach equilibrium and then when the humidity decreases, the bottom will be drier and it'll warp like that. So having the same amount of varnish on top and bottom avoids that sort of out of equilibrium problem. But even if humidity changes are completely even in the wood, the wood itself will warp a little bit like this and like this as the humidity changes. And even if you cut all the ends so that they're perfectly square, as the humidity decreases, for example, they'll all go a little bit like that. And if they're cut to be square like that and then it increases, of course, they'll go the other direction. And the way to counteract this is to alternate the direction of the grain in the pieces like so. And that way, if all of these pieces warp, by alternating it, it just creates a slight waviness instead of one big arc. A comment I always get when laminating pieces together like this is, why not reinforce the uh, joint with dowels or biscuits or dominoes? And that will also force the two pieces into alignment. Unless, of course, I cut it slightly wrong, which I did here, in which case this forces it out of alignment and that could be very frustrating. Of course, I could leave it a little bit loose so I could still tweak the alignment, but then what's the point of it? And in terms of reinforcing, sure, this will reinforce this area here, but the fact is the wood is not that strong across the grain like this, and a glue joint like this is as strong as the wood, so if I reinforce it, uh, it will still break here, just like this is as likely to break next to the glue joint as it is on the glue joint. And in terms of getting a panel into alignment, almost all the time one of my long reach C-clamps reaches onto the panel joint and I can just tighten that up and that will force that joint into alignment. And if it's wrong a little bit, I can always shim one side or the other. Whereas with this, I'm kind of stuck with what I've got. I just glued the last plank on and the glue joint is along this line and you can see little bits of uh, glue that squeezed out. I actually scraped off all the uh, squeeze out earlier but uh, some more came out and that's good. That means I've got enough glue in there. And I don't sand the top, I just use a cabinet scraper to smooth that out.
Just look at the shine on it. Can you see how that spot right there doesn't shine? Well, there's a knot right here, so I sanded that to get that smooth because the scraper didn't work on it. And the sanded finish just doesn't have that same gloss as the scraper finish. Fixed. Right here is one of the joints that didn't line up perfectly that I have to smooth out with the scraper. And if I move the dial indicator across, you can see there's a difference of about 15 thousandths of an inch. That's about 0.4 millimeters, which is about four times as big a step as the thickness of paper. But most of it worked out much better. Here's another joint between planks. And if I move a dial indicator across that, there isn't any worse bump there than there is on other parts of the tabletop. I started by putting a few dabs of varnish on places where I had tiny gaps before applying it to the tabletop as a whole. The instructions say to put on thin coats, but I like to put it on really thick. First coat of varnish is dry. Normally a sanding comes next, but I prefer to do that with a cabinet scraper because that's much better at taking out a lot of these little bumps. And I've varnished it on the top and the bottom. To allow the varnish to dry on the bottom, I supported it on these little triangles which ended up being stuck to the varnish, but that doesn't really matter that much because it's the bottom. That oil-based varnish takes a while to dry, and after four hours at about 16 degrees or 61 Fahrenheit, it was still tacky to the touch, but for subsequent coats, I turned on my air cleaner and had it blow air across the table, and that dramatically sped up the drying process. The varnish was dry to the touch in two hours. So for the past 15 years, I've mostly been using this Verifane diamond water-based varnish, mostly because it's more convenient, because it used to be, once you open a can of uh, the oil-based stuff, once that seal is broken, the rest goes bad in a matter of months, no matter what you do. Whereas this stuff, I can uh, put some of it in a plastic container and it stays good in there, and I can clean the brushes with water. But this stuff, for places that uh, get wiped down frequently, like a table, I know this will crack. So I got a small can of this, knowing that the rest of it would go bad anyways when I built the chairs. But this time, working on the tabletop, it had not skinned over, surprisingly. So there's something different about it. And it also wasn't as smelly, and it dried much quicker than I'm used to for this stuff. So this must be some kind of a new formulation and it makes this stuff almost as convenient as this. In fact, cleaning the brushes for this stuff, even though I need paint thinner, doesn't take any longer than uh, water with this stuff. Question is, is it as good as the old stuff? So this is an old dribble of the uh, water-based varnish on my workbench. And it seems to just turn into flakes when I scrape it off. And this is an oil-based dribble. And that comes off as uh, one flexible piece. And more water-based dribbles. And more oil-based dribbles. And this is some water-based stuff I dribbled on for a test just yesterday. And that comes off in nicely flexible, but this stuff is still fairly fresh, so I guess it takes more than a day for the stuff to harden. And these oil-based dribbles, they are a few days old. So I think this stuff does stay more flexible than the uh, water-based stuff does. Here's some two-month-old varnish on the bottom of the chairs, and let's see how that comes off. Yeah, still flexible. And here's what this varnish looks like in a glass jar. Totally different from the old stuff. So I think I'll start using that oil-based stuff a bit more again going forward because it seems to be much more convenient than it used to be.